In today's biased news, Myanmar inches closer to civil war, Donald Trump pleads not guilty again, and a hopeful breakthrough in cancer treatment. Further unrest in Myanmar as more armed groups form and coalesce around a strategy for ethnic federalism in the country dominated by Bamar Buddhists, a religio-ethnic group comprising two-thirds of the country's population. One of the most prominent is Maung Song Ka, a former poet that took up arms and helped found the Bamar People's Liberation Army after the February 2021 coup by a military junta claiming voter fraud. This occurred following the general election of 2020 which the military felt would reduce their significant influence in the country, which they've enjoyed since the late 80s. Regardless, neither side of the election represented regular Burmese, instead campaigning for nondescript democracy and increased friendliness to Western capital on one side, and the continued domination of the country by the military on the other. Neither have made any attempts to stop the mass killings of the Muslim minority by government and civilian forces. In a recent statement, the BPLA, whose members are mostly Buddhist themselves, declared that they would begin carving out territory in the center of the country in order to more directly confront the military junta's forces. The recently deposed government and their allies have been supplying weapons, food, and other necessities at camps near the borders of Myanmar for the rebels. Alliances have been struck with dozens of other militias, most representing minor ethnic nationalisms, but others expressing an explicitly hard left line. The junta has refused to discuss with the rebels or to comment on developments, instead referring to them as terrorists disturbing the peace. Rebel actions have gained some territory and disrupted the ability of the junta to govern in some parts, though they've made no strategic acquisitions as of yet. Funding has by far been their most difficult challenge, and many older groups have resorted to drug trafficking in order to raise funds. As a result of declining economic activity and natural gas prices, which represents 40% of Burmese exports, Local contradictions are sharpening, mostly along ethnic lines in the incredibly diverse nation. It remains too early to say if a proper civil war will take place. Former US President Donald Trump pleaded not guilty to charges related to an alleged plot to overturn the 2020 election. He's accused of promoting false claims of election rigging, pressuring officials to alter results, and attempting to disrupt the certification of Joe Biden's victory. This is Trump's third time pleading not guilty since April. The most severe of the charges carries a maximum prison sentence of 20 years. The next court date is set for August 28th, where a trial date will likely be set. Trump's lawyer raised concerns about the complexity of the case, but prosecutors argue for a speedy trial. Trump's legal troubles have not significantly affected his status as the leading Republican candidate, as polls show continued support from his base. Mexican authorities report that a tragic incident occurred on Thursday, resulting in the death of at least 18 people. The accident involved a passenger bus carrying both foreign migrants and locals, which plunged into a ravine. This incident is not an isolated one, as Mexico has experienced multiple similar accidents leading to the fatalities of migrants attempting the perilous journey to the United States. China has decided to end anti-dumping tariffs on Australian barley imports after about three years of implementation. In response, Australia, which has been known for heavy anti-Chinese rhetoric in the past half decade, is now borderline begging China to lift all remaining trade restrictions, particularly on wine, as trade ties between the two countries begin to normalize. The removal of the barley tariffs follows the resumption of trade in other products like coal and timber. The easing of tensions between the countries has led to a potential visit by Australia's Prime Minister to Beijing later this year. Russia has increased its 2023 defense spending target to over $100 billion, which is one-third of all public expenditure. The escalation in spending comes amid the rising cost of the war in Ukraine, putting significant strain on Moscow's finances. Specific details about defense spending were not publicly disclosed, but the increase indicates the significant impact of the ongoing conflict on Russia's budget. $100 billion is quite a sum. And it's unfortunate that we've all become desensitized to such massive military spending thanks to countries like the US inching ever closer to that even more absurd trillion dollar annual military budget. The coup leader in Niger, General Chani, has rejected pressure from West African leaders to reinstate deposed President Mohamed Bazoum. He criticized the economic sanctions imposed by the regional bloc ECOWAS as illegal and inhumane, urging the people of Niger to defend their nation. ECOWAS has imposed severe sanctions on Niger and has threatened to use force if Bazoum's presidency is not restored by August 6th. 
The standoff between Niger and the bloc has escalated, with the governments of Mali and Burkina Faso expressing support for the coup regime. And to end with some very positive news, researchers have developed a promising cancer-killing pill called AOH1996, which appears to annihilate solid tumors while leaving healthy cells unaffected. So far, it's shown to be effective in treating cells from various types of cancer. The drug is currently undergoing preclinical research in the US, and the first phase of a clinical trial in humans is underway. If successful, this breakthrough could lead to more personalized and targeted cancer treatments in the future. That's all for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news. If you'd like to see longer episodes with more in-depth analysis, consider becoming a patron so we can grow and expand.